morning. So today we do a beautiful piece of literature from Romeo and Juliet. Incidentally, this is the first poem we have to study in the second year PUC. And till now, PU board has been prescribing one of the sonnets of Shakespeare. It is accepted. The study of English language and literature will remain incomplete without something from Shakespeare. So the board has been so far including in the syllabus a sonnet from Shakespeare and this is the first time a few lines from the drama is selected for the study of the secondary PUC students. And uh, they have selected the best uh, drama, the heart throbbing love story of Romeo and uh, Juliet. And this story <coughs> has been made so wonderful with the magic of Shakespeare, Shakespearean variety, Shakespearean depth, Shakespearean insight and imagination into the life of human beings has made him a dramatist, a class by himself, which no one has come near to. As far as Romeo and Juliet is concerned, this is a real story that happened in Verona in Italy. There were two powerful families in Verona. One was Monde family and the other Capulet. These were immensely rich, very powerful, but these two families were rivals and their rivalry reached the point of enmity that one couldn't tolerate the sight of the other. And they had their own small army to protect them. Even a servant of Monday family couldn't stand the presence of the presence of a servant of Catholic family, they would fight for nothing. That was the background. It was a headache for the Prince of Verona. Now, as our story begins, Romeo, the hero of the drama, belongs to Monday family and he is the only son here apparent of Lord Monday. Capulet's family is here as his Juliet, so pretty a girl. And as the drama begins, both of them are teenagers. And the background of the story will make the story more attractive. As the drama begins, Romeo, our young hero, was in love with a beautiful girl by name Rosalind, but she never responded. That made him a rejected, dejected lover. At that age, a young boy who was so enthusiastic in his affair with a girl when dejected, becomes a rejected lover, having many options in front of him. But for him, he went into <coughs> some kind of depression. He didn't want to take revenge. He didn't want to challenge. He went into depression and his parents were greatly worried. The only son stopped talking to people not spending time with his friends, not eating, not sleeping. Typically, one who was in deep depression. And he had two intimate friends by name, Mercutio and Benvolio. Romeo's parents asked his friends somehow to cheer him up. 
whatever they do, it had no positive impact on Romeo. He was always brooding on his Rosalind. Now comes a chance. Lord Capulet, as it was customary for the tribal lords to keep their superiority, to maintain their first status in the state, arrange a grand dinner. And all the noblemen of Verona were invited to the party except a member of the Monday family. Noblemen and all his clan, a huge gathering and in those days the most important item of the get together, the grand dinner was the dance on the stage. And this dance was performed by the prettiest girls in Verona. And in the group, Rosinen also had a place. So, Mercutio and Benvolio told Romeo, we will go tonight to attend the party of Lord Capulet for you to get a chance to have a look at your heart from Rosalind. Hearing the name of Rosalind, Romeo suddenly becomes cheered up and he likes to go on the side and the party of Catholic would be the end of him. So they are a, they want, they plan to go in disguise, wearing a mask. Now, Romeo accompanied by Mercutio and Benvolio come to the grand dinner party of Lord Capulet. That's why today, how many lovers lived on this earth, they are dead and gone. Romeo and Juliet, they also loved, they also lived, they have died. But Shakespeare with this magic has brought them back to life. And today they have become the synonym for teenage love. As long as the world lives, as long as man lives on this earth, as long as man loves on this earth, the love story of Romeo and Juliet will be told and retold. Maybe Horatius would read out the reading. Others might be watching on the screen in the theater. A few might be watching the drama on the stage. Others would be listening to it in the class as we do. It will go on for ever and ever. Shakespeare has made it in modern. This is what is taking. This is the background of the story. The huge gathering, wonderfully decorated, all the noblemen seated there, the dance is going on on the stage. Just imagine Romeo and Juliet, Joe, Romeo and his friends enter to the door, they look at other side, other end, they see a few girls dancing. Romeo was amazed looking at those girls. At the center of the party, there was a girl so pretty, a dazzling beauty. Romeo couldn't he expressed the beauty of the girl in words. So the sudden feeling, the intensity of the feeling of Romeo for that girl is expressed just with the sound oh. A sudden expression. And here starts the soliloquy of Romeo. And what we study are just a few lines. We have selected 10 lines from Romeo and 9 lines from Juliet. Romeo's 10 lines come from the first act.
just the ten lines. And in, by the way, all the Shakespearean dramas are written in five acts. Each act is subdivided, subdivided into scenes, and each scene comprises plenty of lines, up to 500 lines in some cases. In some cases, just five lines. And this Romeo cannot express his feelings to anyone else. That intensity of feeling. He is unable to control his feelings. So he is expressing his feelings for the damsel dancing there in a solely look piece. This is a Shakespearean technique. He has perfected in all his dramas. Soli Lokvi means speaking to oneself, to self. The technique in drama is Shakespeare didn't want to fool the audience. Shakespeare wanted the feelings in the hero or the heroine or any other character to be known to the audience but shouldn't be known to the co-actors on the stage. That is what he talks to himself and other actors on the stage do not hear him but it is audible to the audience because he never wanted to fool the audience he always took the audience into confidence and here begins oh that oh speaks volumes he couldn't find a word to express that sudden amazement suddenly something comes out and in this background, this uh, 10 lines, and again we are studying only just uh, 10 lines from Romeo's soliloquy and uh, 9 lines from Juliet's soliloquy from a very big drama that uh, runs into 4766 lines. 4766 lines is the length of the drama. And uh, he has given us few lines. Now we will start with the soliloquy of Romeo. You have to imagine the audience is enthralled with the dance. Meets going on, dance going on, and uh, expressing his feeling. She doth teach the torches to burn bright. See the exclamation at the end of the first line. She doth teach the torches to burn bright. Shakespeare has been very profuse in the use of figures of speech. To enhance the quality of his poetry and to bring home the imagery to the audience. Oh, is yes, expression of surprise. Then he continues, she does teach the torch just to burn bright. Night time. In the background of darkness, a torch that burns appears to be very bright. Romeo in his admiration for that dancing damsel says in comparison to the dazzling face of this girl brightly burning torch appears to be dim so this is figure of speech is called a metaphor metaphor is an implied simile implied he doesn't speak directly, but he implies that both are bright, but the brightness of the girl dancing there cannot be compared with the light to the brightness of the torch in any way. It appears a dim before that dazzling brightness. He continues, it seems, and he Shakespeare elsewhere says, when the heart burns with the love, the tongue becomes so prodigal. Can talk anything, no problem. He continues to speak. It seems, it appears, 
seems to disappear. She hangs upon the cheek of night. So this is the beautiful imagery. Students by sometimes ask how can someone hang on the cheek of night? First night got a cheek. So this is the beauty of poetry. Here we find the personification. Night is personified. So only a person has got a cheek. Night doesn't have a cheek. If night is personified, night has got a cheek and uh, Romeo tells she appears to be hanging on the cheek of night. Again, night is dark, she is bright. Again, the contrast between dazzling brightness and darkness. Again, Romeo continues, she doesn't stop as a rich jewel in an Ethiopia. Now comes the simile. See, the, every line is a figure of speech. First line is a metaphor. Second line is a personification. Third line is a simile. How does she appear? She appears like a bright jewel. Bright jewel on the earlobe of an Ethiopian woman. That is a Negro woman. Negro is dark in color and a bright diamond that is dangling on the ear lobe of the Ethiopian woman brings such a wonderful contrast between the dark skin and the dazzling bright diamond. For Romeo, that girl is the diamond. And again, interesting point, at this point, Romeo doesn't know that girl is Juliet. He is not aware that is Juliet. Really beautiful girl. Again, he continues, beauty too rich. Now he wants, so the first line he brought up, metaphor. Second, he brought personification. Third line, he brings a simile and now he says I don't get the words to express the beauty of that girl words fail me see beauty too rich for use so beautiful that the beauty cannot be expressed with any word that a man uses in his speech beauty too rich for use for earth too dear Again, attitude here means, I wonder, I wonder, Romy is wondering whether he is on this earth or in heaven. That girl appears to be a goddess. The place of goddess is heaven, not earth. I wonder how the goddess has come down from heaven to the stage that man has built. See the line for earth too dear. She is not supposed to be here on this earth. So this is called a hyperbole. That is over exaggeration. That the girl is not supposed to be on this earth. That the girl is a goddess who should have been in heaven by mistake she must have come here so that expression is called superlative or superlative we call in figure of speech hyperbole over exaggeration not exaggeration over exaggeration so i hope you understood all the first three lines you know, understanding is not difficult. We can teach anyone, we can tell the story to anyone, they will understand it. But here, you be pre university students with the fantastic imagination and also almost the age mate of Romeo and Juliet. You all could be called Romeo and Juliet. What is important is understanding is one side. Release it. Release the beauty. Release the beauty. And cherish it throughout your life. Releasing it now.
taste or taste it is coming to know. And cherish it throughout life. And I tell you, you could ask your parents if they have studied in any college, yes. In all the universities in India, we complete the language and literature studies with a she spirit drama. Normally, people will forget all that they have studied at the college level, even the optional subjects. But the magic, the Shakespearean drama, they never forget. As you are now, chance of studying drama, you know, could be branching off to medical, engineering streams, and not, not drama. So God has given you something to taste. Taste it, relish it. Cherish it throughout life. So, these three lines, first line, as I have explained to you, is a metaphor. Metaphor is hidden comparison. That is, simile is direct comparison. Metaphor is something hidden. He runs very fast. He runs like a tiger. Like a tiger is comparison. He is a tiger when he runs. That's a metaphor. Now, second line is his hands upon the cheek of night. That beautiful contrast. Night one side and she bright. Night is personified. Night is personified. Hanging on the cheek of night. This is the beauty of figure of speech. You don't ask the question, how can there be cheek for the night? Where can it be hung? Don't ask. It's a poetic imagination. Poets can create all these things. We call it a big belief. She hangs upon the cheek of night as a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Rich and the precious jewel. Who is wearing it? Ethiopian woman is dangling it on her, on her ear lobe. Ethiopian is dark black jewel is bright precious hope you understood all of this and uh, recollect it try to remember try to enjoy try to relish and uh, see all these three lines you register in your imagination we'll continue in the next class thank you